Okay, when we place numbers on a number line, um, the format we typically take is to place a dot on the number we want to represent and then write the number above that dot. So let's start with the number 7. Now, 7, if you look at the number line, uh, typically what you see in the middle is a 0, and then to the right are the positive whole numbers, and to the left are the negative whole numbers, and in between the whole numbers are fraction numbers. So, let's start with the number 7. Well, here's the 7. Place your dot right on the number line. Not above it, not up here, not down here, not above the number. Right on the number line where um, this hash mark up and down and this number line cross. Right at that intersection. That's where we place the dot. And then write your answer above it. So that tells me you know the number 7 is right at this location where this dot is, this point. Now negative 10, same thing. It's all the way over here. So we place a dot right on the negative 10 and then write the number above it. Again, the dot goes right on the intersection of the vertical and horizontal lines. And you write the value above it. Negative 2, just a little bit to the left of 0. And we label it. So this is with whole num uh, integers laid by the number line, very straightforward. If you have positive and negative fractions, you need to be aware of where you are on the number line. So let's start with the most basic fraction, which is one half. Half means halfway between something, right? So one half is the right half between zero and one. The problem here is that there are no vertical lines, so we have to estimate with our dot, and you do a lot of estimating on number lines. Uh, and I think it makes the most sense because this is a half of a fraction. Put it halfway between the two numbers you're dealing with. Now, four and a half, go find four. It's saying four and one half, so it's higher than four and halfway between four and five. So put a dot between four and five. Label it as four and a half. And we have our fraction. Now, negative fractions, there's some room for confusion. Let's look at negative 3 and a half. Start at 0. Here's negative 1. Go a little bit further, you have negative 1 and a half. Notice here, the halves are to the left. So negative 2 is here. Negative 2 and a half is not back up here, as it is with positives, but further down on the negative values. So negative 2 and a half, negative 3, negative three and a half. Other fractions you might typically encounter are thirds. Um, so let's just look at that real quick. So if we have one third, two thirds, and then you might, you might see this, negative two over three, or two over negative three, or negative two thirds. And we'll talk about why these one, two, three fractions are in fact the exact same. So let's clear our number line and look at some thirds. Now thirds and halves are probably the most common thing we'll encounter on the number line, especially when we're estimating. So one third <clears throat> is actually quite easy to place. Um, here's zero and here's one. Picture, or at least what I do, I picture that between 0 and 1, there are three equal spaces. Those are my thirds. 1, 2, and 3. So here's 1 third, 2 thirds, and the whole number. Now this, is of course, is a rough estimation. But I always try to picture those thirds between all the whole numbers. This way it's easier for me to place where the value should go. So 1 third would be the first third right here. It's an estimation. What we're looking for is that... Um, you're not placing the one-third above the half. It should be below the half. So then we label it as one-third. And then two-thirds um, would go, not where the first third is, but where the second third is. And negative, and again, here we're looking to see that dot is above the halfway point. So that's these two right here. Done and done. Now our negative two over three and 2 over negative 3, and negative 2 over 3. The reason I wrote all three of these is because I don't want you to be confused. If you see a negative in the numerator or in the denominator, and only one negative sign, 
These are in fact the exact same fractions, and so is this one here. For a further discussion of why that's so, I'm going to be happy to talk to you about that in class, or you can drop me a line and we can talk about it. However, for now, let's just say they're all equal. Now, where did they go? Well, here's 0, here's negative 1. Again, I'm going to picture my little hash marks. Here's negative 1 third, negative 2 thirds is right here. So I'm going to pick this fraction right here just to put above it. I'm going to write it that way. It seems to be the, make the most sense to me. Place my dot, and then I'm going to write negative 2 over 3. And that's basically what we should remember for fractions. Our thirds and our halves are our, our building blocks. And um, here we see some more of the same. Negative 2 thirds and 2 over uh, negative 3. Those are the same. So go over those again. Uh, negative 4 and 2 thirds. Let's go over that one. So here's 0. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, oops, and 2 thirds. So I picture those hash marks. It's going to be about here. And then I label it negative 4 and 2 thirds. 1.4 and 1.3. Well, again, try to picture now, because we're dealing with tenths, that in between 1 and 2 are 10 little dots, and you're estimating. So 1.3, maybe about here. It's about a 1 and a third. 1.4, a little bit larger. And if you're having a hard time fitting your, your information on there, draw a little arrow that points to the location. Negative 1.3, negative 1 and 0.3, right here. And negative 1.4 is further down on the number line. What perhaps could be confusing um, is when you're dealing with irrational numbers. Pi, what we should remember about pi is that it's about 3.14159. This is the value of pi that you're responsible to remember in our class. So here's 3. Now 0.14, uh, it's about a tenth and then a fourth of a hundred. So it's about here. That's pi. Square root of 99 seems difficult. Think of a square root that's near that number that you know, like square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. So the square root of 99, remember we talked about this in another video, this is irrational because there's no exact whole number that gives you this whole number. So it's between 9 and 10 because 9 squared is 81. So however, look how close, 99 is very close to 100. So the decimal that gives you 99 times itself is 9, and then really close, I'll put a little arrow to indicate that, up to 10. So when you're deciding where to put this, you know it's between 9 and 10, the square root of 99, but it's very close to 10. So I'm going to put it about here, square root of 99. Same thing here with the square root of 15. The square root of 16 is 4, so we know it's near 4, and the square root of 9 is 3, so it's between 3 and 4, somewhere near pi. Now where do you put it? Well 15 is very close to 16, so that means the square root of 15 has to also be very close to 4, and you could put it right here. Again, I'm running out of room, so draw a little arrow and label it. That's the basic idea.